Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you the steps required to contribute to the VATSIM UK sector file. It is intended mostly for first time contributors, but there are multiple sections covering various aspects of the process, some of which may be useful even to more experienced contributors. We will cover issues, how to make the actual changes, use of the compiler to test your changes, and pull requests. See the video description for timestamps for various sections. We'll work through an example to demonstrate how you might go about making your first contribution to the UK sector file. If all you want to do is mention a problem that you found or you need help beyond what's provided in this tutorial and in the GitHub guides, the best place to look for that or do so is the Vatsim UK Discord in the um, sector file development channel which is uh, towards the bottom of the Vatsim UK Discord under operations. So hopefully you're interested in getting involved and contributing to the sector file itself. How do you go about that? Well the sector file is hosted on GitHub on the Vatsim UK page. In case you're unfamiliar GitHub is an online collaborative way of using the version control system Git. You will be able to see the UK sector file repository, as it's called, without a GitHub account, but to make any meaningful contributions, you'll need to open an account. So as you can see here, we're on the Fatsim UK GitHub page. There's the various repositories here top left is the UK sector file so we'll go to that you can see it's a public repository and this is what you met with there's various tabs here there's the code itself different issues pull requests we'll come on to all of this later and then other things as well there's also the wiki which hosts a load of guides about how to contribute what different things mean, how they all work. It's really worth a read and goes into a lot more detail that I couldn't cover in this video. So if you get stuck, a good first place to look is the wiki. There's also under code.github uh, some guides here. So the style guide is quite useful as well. So if you're wondering what a commit message should look like, go to them and it'll talk to you about commit messages. So that's useful as well. So let's get kicked off then. So we want to start by creating a uh, GitHub account. So we'll sign up. So I need an email address. And a password. and a username. I mean this can be anything you want it to be but it will be what you're known by on GitHub so it could be your initials or something like that or for this purpose I think I'll go with that sim newbie. Oops, would help if I could spell. And of course it's got to be unique so this one is available. In fact, let's go that sim UK newbie. Uh, we'll not receive product updates. Solve this puzzle so we know you're a real person. Crumbs. Create account. So now my email address has received a launch code. So I'll just go on my email and check that. Bear with me. So I'll paste that in. This isn't too important. So I'll just do those two. And uh, we can 
can do this all for free. It's all for free. Don't worry about that. So continue for free. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thing here. Lovely. So that's all fine. That's all you need to do. That's your GitHub account created. So let's go back now to the parts of the UK sector file. And you can see we're logged in. You can set a profile picture, things like that, but it's not necessary. So the code tab. This is where all the constituent files that make up the sector file itself are stored. The reason we have to split it down is the actual sector file is huge. It's like 200,000 lines plus. So to make it manageable to work on without getting in each other's way while working on different aspects of the sector file, we break it down into lots of different files in lots of different folders that are self-contained relating to a certain thing. So for example, pull airways and more folders, you've got the helicopter airways and it's got information about each of those. And these, these are just text files with um, the names of the fixes that contribute to that airway, for instance. Don't worry too much about the specifics if you're just looking to a simple change, but that's where all the code is. So the issues tab then is where we track things that need to change or issues with the sector file. So these have various different categories depending on the type of change but they're all self-contained pieces of work that need to be done on the sector file. There's various different types of issues as indicated by these tags. So procedure change is a non-AIP related procedure change, for instance, quite self-explanatory, most of them. An ARAC change is an AIP related change and a bug is a bug or error enhancement for new or improved features. One tag to look out for if you're new is the good first issues tag, which indicates that the actual change you'll need to make is quite small and simple. It just means you'll have to get used to the GitHub environment and contributing through GitHub, making issues. Oh, well, the issue would be already open in that case, but making the pull request and all that kind of stuff that we're about to go through. The pull request tab then uh, refers to when work on an issue usually has been completed it's sometimes when a issue uh, has been started but not quite completed it's in draft version uh, but the pull request is the way that the work that's ready to be integrated into the main project is pulled back in as it's referred to and the reason we do that is we work independently on a branch so that we're not interfering with the final product if we don't get it quite right the first time we don't want to mess something else up we want to make sure it's a self-contained piece of work that works independently and then once that's checked and approved it gets pulled in. So as you can see the uh, tags here follow the same format as the tags used in the um, issues except that you might see something like on hold there at the bottom uh, where the pull request is on hold because we're checking the functionality for instance. Don't worry too much about all the specifics so you'll get more familiar with it over time and hopefully if we go through the work example now you'll see how it all works in practice. So for this tutorial we'll go through an example of an issue that I've literally just discovered this morning and we'll go through that and how that's raised, corrected and uh, hopefully hopefully corrected anyway and uh, integrated into the Vatsim UK sector file. So the first step is to make sure there's no similar issues that have been recently completed or opened because it would defeat the objective if someone's already fixed your bug, for instance. Uh, there's no point doing that. So these are the ones that have opened and not yet integrated. It's none of those. The thing I'm planning to work on is to do with Old Grove, Echo Golf, Alpha Alpha is the ISAO code. So I could search, for instance, issues, Echo Golf, Alpha Alpha. And these are the latest ones. So inbounds, Navar, Belzu. Yeah, that was closed on September the 19th. So quite a little while ago now, it's now November. So um, it's not been fixed yet. I'm quite confident of that. So when I'm ready, I can create the new issue. Use the green button. I've got to select which type of thing it is. The AirVac one you shouldn't really be touching if you're a first time contributor. This is for maintainers use only as it says. 
However, if you believe we've missed an error at change, you can let us know via Discord. Um, so this one is going to be a bug. And then I've got to describe the bug. So I'll first show you what's going on. And to do that, I want to open a Euroscope. And I'll need to connect uh, to that sim to show you what's going on. But I don't want to do that because I'm not actually wanting to control. So a way to get around that is to use Euroscope's built-in FSD server that comes packaged with uh, Euroscope's install. So if you just search the start menu for FSD, Euroscope FSD server, start that. If you can't find it through the start menu there, it's in Euroscope's install directory. So in my case, C programs x86, Euroscope, and then it's called Euroscope FSD server.exe. And it loads up and then it's uh, running an FSD server locally to your machine. So we'll start your scope. And like I said, it's to do with the Aldergo. So I'll open the Aldergo SMR profile. And the actual problem is to do with tower uh, sector ownership. So I want to connect as Aldergrove tower. I don't want to connect to that sim, although I'll leave it as direct to that sim. I want to change the server to local host. That means I'll connect to my local FSD server. And then I press connect. Yes, continue. And you can say instead of the VATSIM logo there, it says connected. So that's how I know I've connected to the right thing. And the problem I'm getting is when I connect, the runway selection dialog should select departure and arrival for Aldergrove, but it's only selecting departure. So that's what the bug is. So we'll go back to uh, GitHub and add a title. So this just needs to be a description of the uh, problem or what needs to change. So in this case, it's going to be Aldergrove and it's best to include the ICO and the name so they're easy to search by either uh, tower arrival runway selection not working. Something like that. Just keep it brief. And uh, we'll come back to these these things later. But what is the bug or error? When logging on as Golf Alpha Alpha underscore TWR, the arrival airport is not set by default. Again, keep it simple if you can. If you need to give more details, uh, do give more details, but um, there's no need for me to here, especially as I'm planning to work on this myself. If you're planning for to just raise the issue for somebody else to work on, it's useful to give as much detail as they're going to need to work on it. What is the expected functionality? Rival airport gets sel selected. Sources not really applicable and files to be changed if known so I will have a look in the uh, UK sector file repo under code airports it's going to be Old Grove and it's probably to do with the ownership I think well it will be I know that if you don't know it doesn't matter just leave it blank and somebody who's gonna uh, do the issue can uh, help so we can copy that paste it there uh, preview it oh, it's gone on to a different line you see so it is worth going on the preview I'll get, just get rid of that line break did that work there we go okay and then I can't assign this to anybody it says up for grabs and I'll submit new issue now, of course, we want to work on this ourselves. So the way to do that as a newbie is saying, I will work on this. Comment. And then somebody with the power will hopefully come along, remove the up for grabs and um, put you as the assignee, which basically means you'll be assigned to that task. Uh, the issues need to be assigned to an individual so that we don't have multiple people working on one thing at once, basically. 
So that's the issue open and requested to be worked on. So now we're ready to make the changes. So if we go to the uh, code again, we can scroll down to the uh, little readme here and there's a general contributing guide, first time contributing guide. So we'll go to the first time contributing guide and this explains it all. Uh, we will go through all this, but just just to say this is here, if you, if you want to read it or go back to it, if I'm going too quickly or whatever, just, well, you can pause the video, but you know, this is also an, an option for you. So the issue's been sorted out. The next thing is to go and fork the project. So we need to, need to go to code. I'll do this in a new tab, just so we've got that to refer to later. So we go to fork here, and I want to fork my own copy. And I'm going to keep the name the same, and I'm going to be the owner. That's the description. Copy the main branch only, that's fine. Create fork. Just got to be patient for a couple of seconds. And there we go. Now, this is a different version of the repository. This is Vatsim UK newbie, um, UK sector file, not the Vatsim UK sector file. So for the first time contributions, we're going to definitely do this on a fork because we don't have the permissions to uh, create branches, etc., on the main repository. So that's why we've got to fork it. But uh, so just to make that distinction that what we're working on now is an independent copy of the UK sector file, even though it's a similar name and because my username is Vatsim UK newbie, it's, it looks a bit similar. So there we go. So I forked the repository, forked the project, and then we want to download the GitHub desktop client. So you can visit that to download it for your relevant operating system. I already have it downloaded, it's down here. So I've got to open, there we go, I've got to open this and I've got to options, sign in, continue with browser, authorize desktop, open GitHub desktop. So, so what you need to do then once you're logged in in GitHub desktop is go file, clone repository and select the repository and press clone. Uh, so this is downloading all of the uh, information to my local machine so I can work on it locally, basically. There are ways to work on things through the GitHub website, directly on the website, but it's usually much easier to do it locally, especially because we want to build a uh, compiled version to test before opening the pull request ideally. So when we open the pull request, it's like saying uh, this work is good and it's ready for integration. If it's not ready for integration yet, you want to have tested it yourself and iterate it through, especially if you're doing more complex changes. This change is gonna be a very simple one, hopefully. Uh, but if you're doing something like drawing an SMR, something like that, that's a much more iterative process, it's really important to have it locally. So that's why we're doing this. So there we go. How are you planning to use this fork? And you definitely want to leave this as to contribute to the parent project because that means it will allow you to use um, the Vatsim UK version because remember we're working on this fork. The Vatsim UK version will be, uh, I think it's called the upstream. Uh, so it will allow us to send a pull request targeting Vatsim UK slash UK sector file rather than our own fork, which would be a bit pointless really. So we'll leave it as the top one, press continue. And here we are. And then we have to press fetch origin. This just fetches the upstream, like I was saying, and make sure we're up to date with it. And then to start working on our changes, we need to create a branch, like I said, so that we're not um, on top of what's called main, which is kind of the agreed, approved, everything's good on main. We always keep main in a good state, ready for release. So we want to do our changes on a new branch. 
this will go branch new branch and the name of the branch will be issue dash and then the issue number for the issue which we just created so we'll go no, that's our fork where's our it's forked from this so that remember the issues are specific to the uh, repository so the issue is here and I'll open that and you can see it's hash 5103 so that's the number of the issue the issue number so issue 5103 create branch good so then we need to actually edit the files that we want to change so we're going to go to open the file explorer and it should be in documents github uk sector file that's where the default is so that's where it's gone so airports alder grove uh, ownership that's what we said we'd need to change and then we're going to have a look uh, for the sector for Alder Grove Tower, that's the one that's going to be wrong. Then you can see here it's got departure airport, Echo Golf for Alpha Alpha, but it's not got an arrival airport entry, so that's why it's failing. So we'll copy this arrival airport, Echo Golf Alpha Alpha, place it there, press save. That's the actual change done, that's all we're going to be changing. And I know you, at this point you're thinking, um, this is a huge amount of work for a small change, which it is. But the point is, this is a good first issue to get you used to the systems around this small change. So when we're doing big changes that require more significant work, let's say, um, the same architecture holds and you can make all these different changes. So then we come back to uh, GitHub desktop app and you can see here that we've got this added line in green to add the arrival airport Echo Golf Alpha Alpha. So then we have to commit this change. So down here we have a commit box where we can write the title of the commit and a description of the commit. What a commit is, is basically adding the changes to our branch in little packets that make sense as an individual packet of work. So in this case, the whole change is gonna be so small that it's only one commit. But if I was doing an SMR update, it might be that first I draw the KMZ and that's one commit. And then next I update another file and that's another commit. Or I update part of another file related to a certain thing. Or I update a few files related to one thing and a few files related to another thing, something like that. And just keeps them all nice and tidy. You don't have to worry about how many commits you end up doing in one issue because when it comes to the pull request being merged they'll all be squashed it's called so they'll all become a single commit onto the main branch D don't worry if this is confusing you basically small packets of work uh, with a good title here is what you want so that it's easy to see what's going on through the history so update ownership.txt that's what we've done uh, commit messages should be in the imperative tense so that's why it says update rather than updated that's a bit pernickety, but ideally. Um, so I will I will be a bit more descriptive than that. So I'll be correct echo golf alpha alpha underscore tower arrival airport and then I can commit to the issue. Make sure when you press this commit button, it says commit to, and then the branch name, for in, in this case, issue 5103. If it says commit to main, you're doing something wrong and you haven't created the, you're not working on the correct branch. It's very important you commit to the correct branch. So commit to the issue branch. And then if we go to history here, we can see that here, that we've got that change with this commit message that we've just typed and it's got a little uh, arrow this commit has not been pushed to the remote repository yet so basically i've made these changes they're on my machine but they're not on github website yet that's what that means okay so that's us done and we could go and request the pull request 
uh, we'd have to publish the branch, etc. One thing that is very easily forgotten is to update the change log. So the change log is described in. Uh, da -da. Sorry, you've got to commit. I'm just going through all this. Change log message section of the style guide. There's a link. So this is what I was talking about uh, in, the in the style guide. It explains what the change log is going to be. So change log entries are designed to be human readable and understandable, understandable by non-sector hardware. This should be kept in mind as it enables people to understand what has changed each airbag. So this becomes part of when we publish the new sector file, we'll copy the latest batch of changelog entries and that will be a public thing so people can see what's changed. So we need to add it in this format there. It's fairly obvious and you can kind of see what's going on. So the uh, github uk sector file dot github changelog.md here it is we'll add a new line the next number is a four and this is a bug and we want to say we fixed oops fixed because this should be past tense in the changelog as described in the in the style guide so fixed Alder Grove Echo Golf Alpha Alpha oh, in fact I'll say Alder Grove Tower Echo Golf Alpha Alpha underscore TWR Arrival Airport Ownership and then you can say if you wish to thanks to and then your handle, so uh, oh, what did I call myself? Vatsim <laughs> UK newbie, and you can also put your name in brackets. Uh, so John Smith, I'll leave my name off. Press save close that and you can see it's here just give it a quick scan and then we'll make this our second commit so commit to the issue the changelog update changelog.md is fine as the title for that one and then we're ready to publish the branch so it's publishing the black branch and then we can create the pull request. Press that. And this will open it up in uh, our browser again. And then for the pull request title, we again follow the, uh, the um, style guide. Pull request titles should be fixes the number dash and then an imperative uh, command and what's been changed following the style of the issue that we created so it will be fixes hash 5103 correct alter grove Golf Alpha Alpha Tower Arrival Airport Ownership something like that and then here we put the issue number again this is the one that actually links back to the issue through GitHub so it's very important this is correct so we just put that in and it'll pop up and sorry don't know why it went away yeah there it is there it is and it shows that that's correct so you can just check that some of changes uh, a sensible summary so not too verbose just explaining what's happening uh, so per issue bug with ownership corrected
in a screenshot if necessary. Now this reminds me, we haven't really tested this, all I've done is add what I think is the correct thing. So I should probably go and test that first. So to test it, we have to use the sector file compiler, which is also hosted on GitHub. So let me get, get many, many GitHub tabs here. GitHub, if that's from UK, sector file compiler. To use the sector file compiler, there is a compiler guide on, uh, where is that? The compiler guide is here under .github on uh, main. So that, this explains it in more detail as well. Uh, but we'll, I'll, I'll guide you through this quickly. So you go to uh, releases. This is the latest release here. And you choose it for your operating system I'm on Windows. And I'm going to put this in documents. Oh, it was the other documents, wasn't it? Documents, GitHub, UK sector file, and save. And then we go to that place here, and we have to add the extension .exe. It's now an application. Uh, so to use it, we actually go then to PowerShell. And that will open PowerShell. If you do it from from typing it in there, it opens it in the right place. And then you can do dot slash uh, CLI Windows dot XE. Run it. Compilation failed. No config files specified. Oh no, I need some help. Press any key to exit. So we'll do it again. Dash dash help. And it explains what all the different arguments are for this command. So we're going to have to specify a config file. And that is uh, actually included in the sector file repository. So it's, uh, what's it called? Let me just check. Um, uh, Compiler.config.json. So I'll copy that. And some other commands that we can uh, use here. Uh, so I'm not going to bother with these. Build a version, for instance. I'm going to put in build. Oops, build version. And I'll say this is VATSIM UK dev test. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. And I'll also use the no wait. Hopefully this one works. Compilation completed successfully. Fantastic. So that means it compiles. It's right it, in that sense. It doesn't mean it's functionally correct. So I will go here, and this should have uh, created a binary folder at the top there, you see, with the new sector file. So to test that this does actually work, I'll cancel that. I will oops, disconnect, and then I'll open sector load sector file. So we're loading the uh, new sector file here. It's worth saying uh, when we close Euroscope we'll want to make sure that we don't save changes just because otherwise it would use the um, new sector file that we've loaded rather than the normal sector file which we don't really want for future sector file. So I'll open the new sector file that I've just created and then I'll have to go open sector and open the SR to get the view back and then I'll try connecting again. Same thing, localhost, directive at sim. I've still got the FSD server running just there. Connect, continue, and check the runways. Perfect, it's fixed. So I can take a screenshot of that. 
just to prove that what I've done is correct. And that's really useful using the compiler, especially if you're doing something like a surface movement radar. Um, having a screenshot of it just allows a much quicker review. So I'll upload that image there. Preview. That looks fine. Leave this tick, this allow edits by maintainers. Uh, it just means that when we um, come to integrate it, we can change the number on the uh, change log entry, for instance. And then you, if it all looks good and you're happy with it, you can create the pull request. So there you go, it's open. The pull request has opened. Fantastic. You can see these two commits here are in our commit history. Now, what happens next? Uh, before anything gets merged or anything like that, it has to be reviewed. So somebody will come along, look at the files changed, check that the behavior is correct, everything like that, and review it. So you, we usually wait for two approving reviews from people who know what's going on with the sector file, basically. Um, and once we have those, it'll be merged. You should get emails about that. Um, you can update your notification settings so you're here you're receiving notifications because you're the author of this thread um, so that's that's what you you want usually you'll get emails about it when somebody does something to it comments on it approves it request changes all that kind of stuff so I'll actually go into my normal account and review this just so you can see what what that looks like now so here we are back again and you can see that uh, somebody has requested changes uh, just one minute ago and per the style guide they're requesting or even suggesting this is a suggested change that um, those three dashes I put in should just be a space a dash a space a fairly minor thing but it's per the style guide it actually has some implications so it is important um, that's why they've suggested it um, when they've done this this suggestion type thing, uh, we can literally just press commit suggestion, and we can uh, agree to these uh, commit message. If we want, if there are multiple suggestions, we could go to files changed and add suggestion to batch, and then if there were lots of different things that were all similar, for instance. Uh, a white space ever where somebody put an extra space in lots of times something like that uh, you could add suggestion to batch for each one and then up here commit suggestions plural and it'll be say apply suggestions from code review so we'll commit changes with apply suggestions from code review go back to the pull request you can see this now says outdated it's been marked automatically as resolved by me following the suggestion and apply suggestions from code review has gone through. So then hopefully this person will then get a notification about that and they'll come back and re-review it and approve it. If they don't do that within a reasonable amount of time and they've requested changes, you can re-request the review here. I, I would avoid doing that most of the time, uh, just let them come back to it when they get a chance. Great, so hopefully that wasn't too rushed and you learned something. I was trying to keep it brief, I know it's been quite a long video. Like I say, most of these things are all explained in the uh, wiki and things. So how to create an SMR display. So have a look in the wiki if you get stuck and uh, then if you are still stuck, uh, message on Discord. Hopefully that was useful. Thanks very much for watching. And if you have uh, any questions or anything like that, do get in touch. Thanks very much again. Bye-bye.